You know, I always thought it was crazy that he got away with this. I thought there was something special about me that made it happen. But it wasn't me. Mobley, Trenton, or Romero. It was him. It's always been him. When I was five, our parents took us to Coney Island. It was my dad's idea of an Alderson family outing. What are you doing? Making a high-powered antenna. I need to piggyback off someone else's Wi-Fi. I remember looking up at this roller coaster thinking it was the highest thing I'd ever seen. Of course, I wasn't tall enough to go on it, so my dad went with Elliot and I had to wait with my mom. I don't remember exactly what happened next, but somehow I got lost. You know, most kids get scared shitless when they're alone, but I wasn't. I loved it. All of a sudden, I felt someone grab me around the waist and pick me up. There was this old woman. She was skinny and tall. She had this smeared, almost pink lipstick. She held on to me tight. I thought about screaming, but I didn't. I didn't want to. And we went to Nathan's and she said that I could have whatever I wanted. My parents never asked me what I wanted, ever. It was the first time I ever really felt special. We started driving to her house and I definitely remember thinking that something wasn't right, but I just looked at her and her lipstick and let it happen. And then we got to her house and she showed me my room and it had one of those beds with the curtains around it. And I did feel like a princess. I remember thinking that this is my new home and my new life and I didn't have to see my parents ever again. It's like a wish I had that all of a sudden came true. And I went to sleep just hoping that this wasn't all a dream and I wasn't just gonna wake up in my old bed. And sure enough, the next morning I was still there. But then the police barged in. And when they took me downstairs, there were cops everywhere. I didn't even get to see the woman again. And then they put me in their car and took me home. I still wonder what my life would have been like if I had stayed. But if I had stayed, then I wouldn't have Elliot. There are a lot of guys working on this. None of them could figure it out. What's that for? For impersonating an NYPD officer. All cell carriers have a law enforcement hotline. Instead of hacking the carrier, if the situation's urgent enough, you can just ask them to track a block call for you. Done? Not yet. Need a few minutes for the spoof fax to go through. It needs to propagate through their system. No one in the world uses fax anymore except cops. Half of me wants it to be him. Half of me doesn't. Before working for the Wellex, I had a list of clients. All of them eccentric in one form or another. I work for this one guy who used to masturbate in the car. <laughs> he 
He used to have me drop him off at Carnegie Hall. He was a uh, first chair violinist. God. Now he wants to have a heart to heart. Focusing on you helps drown him out. Like talking to someone in a crowded restaurant. All the other voices and noises fade into the background. Somehow your brain is able to decode the components of that complex auditory space. Can you feel it? Good. That gives us time to talk. Is Mr. Robot MIA because he's afraid? Afraid of what I might find when I'm done with this hack. Why did that phone call freak him out? Could he have lied about Terrell? What's his move here? Do you remember the last thing he wanted? He kept wanting to come back home, remember? There must be something here that he needs. He's been bringing it up since we left prison. Can you help? Can you look? Do you see anything? <laughs>